you asked me about my vision of the future for with permaculture. Um, what's yours? Okay. <clears throat> well, let's talk it. Let's talk it through in two in two different parts. One one part is in terms of the likely technologies for a sustainable future, and the other part is in the social social structures. Okay. So in terms of the likely technologies. Um, I basically see, see, see the cities as being gradually um, dis discombobulated and, you know, that, that they'll reduce, you know, like people will move into the country uh, and, and large areas of what are now cities will become agricultural land. Um, I, I see the countryside as being linked by electric train lines, which run trains when there's wind power or solar power and don't bother with storage. So it's intermittent. It's just like when it's up. Uh, you don't bother with, with all that storage stuff. Um, I see most stuff being produced in, in local communities or villages of maybe 5,000 people, um, maybe on, you know, at least a quarter acre block with, you know, like with four hectares of forest for each family and um, a couple of hectares of, of land for cropping and, and, and horticulture and stuff like that. So we're looking at, you know, a family of five, uh, at least five hectares of land. Um, but that, but the, the, villa, the residential units would be fairly close together. So you wouldn't want them too far apart. So maybe 2,500 square metres for, for a residential block, something like that, walking distance, 5,000 people. Uh, next to a train line, okay, all, all, all transport within these communities would be by donkey cart and bicycle and foot, um, or maybe bullet dray if necessary. Um, what else? So they produced almost all of their food, well, pretty well all of their food, and, uh, furniture, housing, uh, except for, you know, a few things maybe like glass or, or maybe even that, but certainly um, maybe a few aspects of housing like roofing iron and, and, and glass perhaps would come from, from, from another centre. I see each of these communities of 5,000 having various industrial functions um, producing within a chain of a network of producers who are linked by these, this train system. Um, and so that the specialised high-tech industrial goods such as computers, um, you know, audio equipment. Um, we'd have much less of it than we do now. We wouldn't have, for example, we probably wouldn't have powered washing machines. We probably wouldn't have, we certainly wouldn't have private cars. There'd be a lot less. Um, we probably, I mean, there'd be a number, there would be a number of industrial goods which we now take for granted we wouldn't have. And the other ones that we do create would be made to be, recycled so you could pull them apart and every little bit of it could be recycled quite easily um, into new products uh, and repaired constantly um, yeah. right so that's the sort of basic layout technologically speaking I think well, obviously we'd have you know composting toilets and we'd have um, you know permaculture type design agriculture sustainable agriculture you know contour buns and swales uh, um, dams and ponds, all that kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, and, and, and houses, passive solar design, you know, north-facing windows in Australia, um, tiled floors uh, on the north side, you know, all that. Anyway, yeah. don't need to go on about that anymore. But, okay, and so, um, and then in, in terms of international transport, it would be by sailing ships or, or airships rather than our current uh, systems of transport. Um, Okay, so I think I'll leave the technological right. side there and say, okay, so in terms of socially, um, I think a lot of things at the local level would be organised more or less like some communes operate now by kind of having a joint meeting and deciding to allocate tasks and kind of roster what are seen as essential tasks and leaving people a fair amount of leisure in which they decide what to do themselves. You know, so you probably wouldn't, roster in as an essential task, someone's, you know, um, artistic work or, or musical practice or something, but, you, but, but, you know, for, in dealing with the garbage or, or the composting or, or, or you know, maintaining the, the, the community roof or whatever, and the windmill or, or, you know, or working in 
maybe um, things like working in the industrial plant for, for your village might be regarded as a rostered task. Um, cool. That, that, that there'd be, that there wouldn't be any money or any state. Instead, uh, or, or everything would be organised by gifts and promises. So voluntary groups would organise their part of a production chain and provide them to other parts of the production chain, maybe in other villages, um, or through an arrangement which you could regard as a con compact, you know, an agreement, or mm -hmm. it could be regarded as a kind of promise to give to donate something. Um, yeah. So say if you're looking at something like a railway line, right? A railway line is made out of part of steel rails, right? So you'd have an, you'd have one community group would be organising digging up the iron ore, recycling the steel from old, you know, recycled steel. Um, and another village might be doing um, turning turning that into basic steel products. Another village might be um, making rail lines. Another another village might be involved in distributing those rail lines to to the people who need them through 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 existing rail transport and then then there'd be groups in the villages putting those rail lines into place and so on in each village to which they were assigned so that that kind of chain of of promises yep. and provisions would extend yeah, or everything would be like that so that the people wouldn't get an income as such they'd be supported by their own community so their food and housing needs and furniture would be all part of what was rostered on by their community and allocated and produced in their own community anyway but also the, the industrial goods they'd be getting would be donated to them by other by by the producers you know at the final point of production the people at that final point would be distribute redistributing that stuff out into communities mm, great so that's um, how i see that how would you um see envisage the conflict resolution well um, initially, like it's in the Chukukwa project, um, there'd be groups within within communities which were charged with mediating conflicts. Okay. Uh, and when when a conflict would be drawn to their attention, in other words, they'd be approached if there was a conflict. Uh, they would bring the uh, aggrieved parties together with a community meeting, uh, to which all would be welcome and expected to participate. Um, and the mediators uh, would be trained as mediators uh, and they would engage in a process of conflict resolution and mediation. Um, for example, one of the things they did at Chikukwa project would be um, members of the conflict mediation team would enact the conflict in a sort of dramatization of the conflict. Um, and while the people involved in the conflict would be kind of looking on, and then they would split the group into men and women because this is a typical African scenario, and and make uh, and, and then they discuss the, the dramatizations that they'd seen, what they thought about it, and try and come up with some resolution of the conflict to bring back to the meeting. So that's a process in which ultimately the community is making decisions about how to resolve the conflict, and there's nothing sort of inevitable about how I mean it's not a set of rules and regulation yeah. Yeah. you have to follow but on the other hand there's a set of community norms in practice which people know you know you don't do that or you do you do behave like yeah. this or whatever yeah. Yeah. Um, okay so the, if it gets to the point where people are becoming violent or trying to take over control of of some resource and exclude other people from it, then there's the possibility of an armed intervention. Now, how oh, would yeah. that be organised? That would be organised by, by by clubs who would be supported by the community to to you know to to maintain those kind of weapons and look after them for situations where this became necessary to be involved in that sort of conflict. We wouldn't mm -hmm. expect that to be likely. But basically, um, just like the revolution itself, it would be a situation where the dom the you know the vast majority of people were dealing with uh, a small fraction who wanted to kind of take control or become an elite or dominate other people or murder people or whatever. So yeah, so it's like I, I don't I'm not I, I don't think I 
I don't think it's necessary to envisage a human society as being always peaceful in order to work out how to resolve yeah. conflict yeah. without a state. Yeah. Right. Right, so if I may, I'm just going to stop there.